Hey gang, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thank you so much for joining me today. In today's video, we're going to go over the steps on how to paint this dairy cow. And it is a black and white cow, but what you're going to realize is we're going to be using shades of gray to paint this and to kind of create some depth and some illusion there. You are more than welcome to kind of change your background colors, paint it whatever you like. Um, I do want you to have fun with this. So what you're going to see in this video, in the description box below, there is a link to a supply kit. And that supply kit is everything that you need for this particular painting. So click on that link, check out your supplies, and gather what you need. Another thing that you're going to see in the description box below is a link to what I call a traceable. And a traceable is a nice way to get your initial image, your initial composition on your canvas or your panel before you even start painting. And for first time and beginner painters, this is a very useful tool. So check out the link. There is a video on how to transfer your traceable to your canvas or your panel. So check that out, but utilize those tools, especially if you're a beginner painter to kind of make the steps a little bit easier for you. So as we go through the video, I don't want you to take yourself too seriously. I'm going to encourage you get expressive, paint outside the lines, get a little bit sloppy. What you're doing is getting more comfortable with your tools, your brushes, your paint, and kind of knowing what you are capable of and growing your skills. So again, this is just practice, have fun. And you'll actually realize that you're more relaxed at the end of painting than you may be right now. So utilize painting as a stress reliever and a creative outlet in your life. So enough talking. Let's go ahead and get your supplies together and let's get started painting. All right, so check out the supply kit and everything that you need for this painting and move on over to where you have your setup and make sure you turn your favorite music on. And if you need an adult beverage or something to help you relax, go ahead and partake in that. And as always, take your progress photos and keep your photos. Once you have your traceable transferred to your canvas, we're going to take our small pointy brush and we're going to outline everything with black paint. And this is really good practice. So those of you that are first time painters, I don't want you to stress if some of your lines are thicker or skinnier than others, or if you have the texture of your canvas showing through on this. All I want you to do is get practice with the pressure of your brush. Notice that the lighter you touch your brush to the canvas, the skinnier the line it makes. The harder you touch your brush to the canvas, the fatter the line it makes. And again, this is just practice. We will repeat this step at the end of the painting. All right, pause the video and take your progress picture. And we're gonna move into our background. And our background's gonna have sky and grass. So we made a light blue with white and added a touch of blue to it. And we drew where our horizon line is. And where that horizon line is, everything above it is gonna be our sky color. So you can fill that in. And if you are moving right into your background color from painting your outline and your black paint is still wet, just kind of be careful as you bring your this light blue paint up to that black wet paint. If you get some black in your background, just take a paper towel and wipe it off and reapply your background color. So here I'm adding some darker blue and mixing it in with the lighter blue. And as you move your brush over the two shades, you notice that it mixes together. All right, so now we're actually mixing yellow and green and you can mix it to any shade that you like. And we're gonna be going everywhere below that horizon line, filling in our grass color. And again, you can play with more yellow, more green, and just filling in that space. Make sure you breathe and relax as you are doing this and pause the video as needed. I do have this as a slightly faster video than some of my other ones because I just want you to practice and have fun. 
So take your progress photo and pause the video. And we're going to be moving into the black spots on our cow. So I am using the small pointy brush to make smaller little brush strokes and black paint. And you'll notice that I'm going to be adding this, not filling in the entire space where our, co our cow has the dark shades. We're going to be filling in the dark spaces with black and dark gray. Then we will move to shades of light gray for where the white spots on the cow are. So again, as you're doing this, relax and breathe. And you are utilizing your power of observation as you do this video. Because you are looking to see where I add shades, and then you add those shades to your canvas. If you make some of the spaces bigger or smaller than what I paint, totally okay. Do not stress about that. I want you to treat this whole thing as practice. You are getting more comfortable with the brush. You're getting more comfortable with mixing paint and more comfortable with the application of applying paint and blending some of your colors. This is one of the things that the more that you practice, the better you get at it and the more comfortable you get. So this is never about being perfect. This is about just taking time out of your day, relaxing and just painting. There is a reason adult coloring books were so popular, are so popular. I want you to treat this kind of like adult painting, adult coloring book style, but using paint instead of crayons or markers. With that being said, feel free to utilize this traceable as many times as you like. You can do multiple paintings of this. You can even transfer the traceable to a regular sheet of paper and use crayons or markers or watercolor pencils or really anything. Just find your space to be creative. It is healthy for you. Half the time you don't realize that you needed it until you have completed the painting and realize that you feel a little bit better and hopefully a little more relaxed. So again, I'm just kind of creating these abstract shapes in the darkest pot parts of our cow, the spots of our cow. And I did like this one for that one spot on the bottom corner that does look like a heart shape. I over accentuated it a little bit more so it was more of a heart shape. You're doing a great job. It's already starting to take shape. If you feel like adding more spots on your cow, feel free to do that. Most things in art are merely suggestions. So pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're going to be moving into dark gray next and filling in the remaining space on the spots of our cow. So to make our dark gray, we're going to take some white and we'll be adding black to it until we get to our dark gray. And you can see that I'm actually just mixing that right next to the black paint that I have on my plate. And I believe I actually make my dark gray a lot darker, so it makes it a little harder to see where I'm adding that or to see the difference between the black and the dark gray. If your dark gray is a little bit lighter than what I make, totally okay. But you do want there to be a slight difference between this pure black paint that you just applied and the dark gray that you're applying right now. And if you are painting, um, at a bit of a faster rate and you're moving right into the next color and your black paint is still wet, you can blend a little bit of this dark gray in with that black paint that is still wet. By moving your brush between the two colors, you can soften that line. If you're not painting super fast today and your black paint is already dry and you're moving into your next color, that's okay. 
will have a bit more of a definition between your two shades, but that lends to a nice style. So again, just take yourself where you're at right now. Maybe if you do this painting again in the future, maybe try pushing yourself to paint a little bit faster so you can try some of the blending. You will get better the more that you practice this. So yep, still using that small pointy brush. And like I said, we're filling in a good majority of the remaining space on the black spots of our cow with this dark gray paint. If you have to make your dark gray paint again, if you have to mix your shade again, don't stress about it being the exact same shade each time that you mix it. Subtle variations do add some nice depth to our painting. And don't stress out if you feel like you're getting lost or losing the ear um, into the spot on the back. We will bring it, the uh, we will bring out the ear again with a little bit of a lighter gray in some steps later on. So you're doing good. Sometimes the painting process feels awkward. Sometimes we don't quite know where the next step's going to go trust the process you're doing just fine and like i said earlier i applaud you just for the fact that you are sitting at home painting it takes a lot of courage to paint at home and not have somebody beside you uh, physically youtube's a nice way for me to help you along the process but i'm not physically there to kind of motivate you and keep you going so I'm doing my best to do it from afar and do it from a video. All right, so if you do have any whites of your canvas or little dots of the white canvas showing through, go ahead and just fill those in with your dark gray. Then we're gonna pause the video and take your progress photo. Then we're gonna be moving into a lighter shade, kind of a medium shade of gray. So again, making that medium shade of gray, pulling some white aside and grabbing some of the dark gray we were just using. So it's almost kind of like you're stepping down from one shade to the next. And we are going for a good light gray here because we're gonna be moving into the white areas of our cow. And even though that this area is white and our canvas is white, we have to create an illusion of depth. So we do actually have to add some gray paint, light gray paint to where our shadows would be on the white areas of our cow. Cause you do have to keep in mind that you are basically a magician right now. You are creating the illusion of a 3D object on a flat 2D surface. And we're playing with our eyes interpretation of color. So by placing a shadow, which is kind of what we're doing right now, the shadows of the white areas, next to a super light or almost white area, that's what gives us the illusion. Those almost white areas pull forward as we view it, and the darker areas push backwards, giving us the illusion of that 3D object. So one of the fun things about painting is just observing how you uh, look at things, how you observe things. Where does your eye go first? What do you see when you look at something quickly? What jumps out? What pushes back? And as you paint, you learn to look at the world in a slightly different manner. And that's the beauty of painting. It's not about being perfect and it's not about being the best, but it's about looking at the world and looking at the things that you love in a slightly different perspective. And the more that you look at things, the more your perspective changes. 
So you're doing good. We're creating depth and space and volume on the white areas of our cow. And I know it feels weird to be putting gray in the white areas. So I encourage you as we go through this painting and any painting that you do, as you paint, you're a couple feet in front of your canvas. So get out of your chair, walk to the end of the room, look at your painting from about 10 to 20 feet away from the canvas. And notice how it looks different as you um, step away from it, as you look at it from that distance. Again, our eyes do something kind of fun as far as blending visually blending the colors together from that distance. So here you can see that I'm taking that same light gray with the small pointy brush and actually going on top of our black areas, our black and dark gray areas. And it's amazing how much this lighter color starts breaking up the space on those darker sections. So again, when we pause the video, I want you to observe the shape and the placement of where this light gray is going on top of our black and our darker gray. This is actually the magical part of painting because it's this light color on top of a dark color that starts to give us volume. And if you do happen to paint somewhere and maybe it's you put it in the wrong spot or maybe your brush fell or anything. You just go back to that original color and paint on top of it again. All right, really with three shades, our image is already taking shape very nicely. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. And our next step, we're gonna go into almost pure white. We're going for a lighter gray almost, almost pure white. And we're gonna be filling in the rest of our cow uh, or rest of the canvas space on our cow, the white areas. And just like with the black areas, if your light, light gray is still wet, you can blend those edges in with this almost white color that we're applying. And again, as you move your brush on the two shades, the seam of the two shades, it blends and softens that line. So I'm not using a whole lot of pressure as I do this, but I am blending the two edges. If you let your, your light gray dry and you have a bit more of a sharp edge between these two colors, completely okay. Like I said, that's your style for today. Make sure you take a deep breath. Sometimes we don't realize that we're holding our breath. And even smile at your painting, kind of like picking up the phone and smiling when you say hello. Smile at your painting. It makes a difference how you feel right now. You're doing a great job. And you're painting, you are relaxing. You're doing something for you. And that is very important in this world. Take care of you. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. You're gonna clean your brush. We're still using the pointy brush and we're gonna put our eye color on our cow. And you can choose any eye color that you want. I'm using burnt sienna here and filling in that outer space. And I believe I actually get a little overzealous and I actually paint over the white catch light. So I will be reapplying that white catch light towards the end of the painting. If you're having a good paint day and you don't paint on top of that catch light, you don't have to repeat the step at the end. But yep, I painted over one, so I went ahead and painted over both. I will reshape the pupils when we get to the black paint. All right, another progress photo now that we have our underpainting completed.
And now we're going to go back to kind of a medium gray, not our light gray, but kind of an in-between color. And we're going to be going back to the white areas and we're going to make one more darker shadow. So again, kind of that medium gray and we are placing it directly on top of some of our lighter grays and some of our whites. We're just going one shade darker to create more depth. And again, this is one of those things that makes even more sense as you step away from your painting and look at it from a distance. Also, when you take your picture with your cell phone and you look at it on the screen, it's the same thing as looking at your painting from 20 feet away without getting out of your chair. So utilize that as a tool after you take your progress photos, look at them for a while. So again, take another progress photo clean your brush we're going to go to black paint and redo those outlines starting with the eyes so again the eyes are pretty small on here so you want to mind the pressure of your brush so little dots tiny tiny little dots and light pressure as we do these small spaces so again light pressure as you do the eyeliner top and bottom and then we'll be going back to the rest of the outline and you can either stick with the small pointy brush or you can move up to the small flat brush when we do the rest of the outlines. The eyes are kind of small on this cow. All right, so now we're gonna go to white paint. We're gonna put those catch lights in there. So again, small pointy brush, white paint. We're just gonna put little dots reference the traceable for where this dot is going. I do want it kind of overlapping that black pupil and a little bit of that eye color. And again, check the placement of where that's going and take your progress photo. All right, so still sticking with the white, we're gonna put a few more highlights in a few other areas on the nose and on the chin and even around the ears. And again, I am overlapping some of that light gray that we put on top of the darker colors, but I'm not uh, completely covering up the lighter grays. This white we are putting on there kind of sparingly because that pure white is um, more of what we call the uh, intense highlight, the lightest area. So take another progress photo, study it on your phone. And now we're going to go back to black paint and finish the outline of our cow. And this is using that small pointy brush or even the liner brush. And we are making these lines a little bit wider than we did the first time we made these. So that way you're overlapping the background and the cow colors. And this bold outline, this is what kind of gives it a bit of a cartoon or even pop art feel. If you like your painting without the outlines, you do not have to do this step. And again, mind the pressure of your brush. And the more that you do this, the better control, the better you get at it. All right, so it's a really fun painting. Kind of simple to create a cow with basically four shades of gray, black, dark gray, light gray, and almost white. So I look forward to painting with you again. Thanks for painting today. Hey gang, I hope your cows turned out really cute. And if you changed some colors, got a little expressive, please tag me in your photos as you're uploading these to social media. Tag me at paint with lovejoy. I really want to see what you guys are painting. I want to see how you're progressing and just kind of how much fun you're having. So please tag me. Also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. Check out my prior videos, leave comments and feedback on the videos that you want me to create in the future. So I really appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to paint with me. Please keep painting, keep finding your creative outlets. It's so needed in this kind of stressful world and I'm honored that you're spending some time with me 
to kind of de-stress. So I look forward to painting with you again. Have a great day. Cheers. So as we go through the videos, ugh, nope. So as we go through the video today, I don't want you to take yourself too seriously with the planes. 